We are very comfortable with, uh, with the scenario today. Uh, we have been telling a story that is consistent. I think uh, the government has been acting on the story. Uh, we always said Brazil is mainly a fiscal story. When you look at fiscal, you have three groups that contribute uh, the most, which is Social Security. We have a reform that has almost passed. You have interest rate on the debt, and now we have lower interest rate. So now if you pick up uh, the amount of money that is spent on interest rate, we are going back to 2011, 2012, when the debt was much lower. On the top of that, you have the privatization, the sale of liquid assets that will uh, go back into diminishing the debt. So that's the second part. And the third part is the expenditure that we have with public workers. And for that, we have also a reform on the way. Are the people going to remain patient with this government, do you think um, the challenge of getting the pension reform bill through and getting those adjustments that you've talked about potentially could be painful for some segments of the population? Yes, I think the question is there is always a, a balance. It's a bit of a balancing act. On one, fa on one side, you have reforms that are painful uh, to the population. On the other side, you create credibility. And when you create credibility, you have investments. And I think through the time it's been proven, and, and you have some empirical work on that, that, that actually the, the benefit of the credibility outweighs the cost that it imposes uh, in the short term. On, on, on that, I would say that we are finally seeing uh, growth picking up. Uh, it's a growth that has a much higher quality because every time we grew in the past in Brazil was basically <coughs> with injections of public money. We are doing it completely different now. If you look at all the spurs of growth that we had in the past, they all were created with huge injections of money that created misallocation. Now we are talking about a consistent growth generated by private factors. The monetary policy approach that you've pursued has seen interest rates come down relatively aggressively over the last three decisions. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, does the bias now remain for much lower rates given the uh, current inflation rate? In, in our official communication, what we have said is that we think there is still room for lower rates based on our, our projections. Every meeting we get together and we look at all the variables and we decide you know, what's the course going forward. When we look at the, uh, at the scenario, we were basically uh, looking at three main factors, the reforms, uh, the external scenario and uh, the internal scenario in terms of growth and inflation. So all these uh, we take into consideration into every meeting. But the level of rates is, as I think we look at them now is still at least 200 basis points above the inflation rate. That seems still to be quite cautious. Or is that just part of the story for Brazil where there are still structural inflationary issues? No, we think we have, uh, we need to have a stimulative rates. So the question, and this is the question that we deal with in every meeting, is how stimulative are they? Uh, so we think we can actually go lower and, and become more stimulative. That's what we said in our last communication. Uh, we have uh, the lowest rate ever in Brazil. Uh, part of it has to do with the global scenario. Part of it has to do with the gaining credibility because you have to look at the fact that the central bank controls the short end of rates. But for every project that matters, especially infrastructure, what matters is the long end. We had times in Brazil in which the central bank lowered the short term, but the curve was very steep because this movement was not accompanied by credibility. What we have now is completely different. We have a low rate with the curve that's very flat, and the long end is very low, which uh, enables the country to actually have financing of inf infrastructure with private money. So that's different. The track record of reform has been one of reforms being shelved in the face of more difficult uh, economic conditions mm -hmm. and something the IMF report flagged up was obviously low growth high unemployment and a reluctance to push these things through when we have a recession we're not there yet but if the trade dispute between America and China goes badly mm -hmm. we don't know whether there will be a deal mm -hmm. do you think that will mean a lot more pressure on the government and it will actually make this reform progress very difficult to push through. Oh, the first question is whether governments work more under pressure than not and I think the answer is yes. Uh, the second is 
uh, how much of a headwind the whole tension, the whole commercial tension is going to be in Brazil. If you look at the map of PMIs in every country in the world today, you're going to see that most of them are pointing downwards. Brazil is actually starting to point upwards. So we are in a scenario that we are growing against an environment that's growing less. Of course, it would be preferable that everybody is growing. We don't have that now. But we think we have room enough uh, in, in, in generating credibility with our own measures that will give us room to grow.